Hi, this is Randall Schwartz, host of Floss Weekly. This week, Dan Lynch joins me. We're going to be talking with the creators of Task Warrior, a to-do manager that has a lot of really great features. You're going to want to see this, so stay tuned. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Floss Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Floss Weekly with Randall Schwartz and Dan Lynch. Episode 175 for July 20th, 2011. Task Warrior. This episode of Floss Weekly is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. It's time for Floss Weekly, the show about free, libre, open source software. I am your host, Randall Schwartz, Merlin at Stonehenge.com. If you want to contact me by email, or if it's too hard to remember, just floss at twit.tv. That also gets right to me because I happen to be the host of this show. But of course, I couldn't do this show single handed. Well, I can actually, but it's a so lot easier when I have a, a co host. So there's the justification for co host. Dan Lynch, welcome back to the show. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, great to be here. I'm. Uh... I'm dialing in from uh, sunny Liverpool. It is actually sunny uh, Liverpool in the UK today, so there we go. Oh, good, good. And uh, I am in uh, San, no, I'm in Culver City today in the secret underground bunker from a uh, large hosting company that happens to be providing me with uh, uh, free tea and uh, and a place to do this from every week. Um, so I really appreciate that for them. Uh, and uh, speaking of sunny, it, it, it's been like 90 or something here every day, which is just really crazy warm. And even my air conditioning doesn't seem to be totally kicking in on my cars and driving around. Uh, well, we have a really great show today. I mean, the show isn't just about you and me, Dan. It's also about the people we bring mm. on. So... We have a really great show today. We have not one, but two guests. We have two guests. We have Paul Beckingham and Federico Hernandez, who are uh, going to talk to us about Task Warrior. Now, Task Warrior, unlike a lot of the things we talk about in here, is a command line program. So you may wonder, what command line program? That's, that's so ancient, so antiquated. No, but what it is, it's a really great way to interact with a set of tasks that you have to do. So let's say you have to, you know, you have to go water the garden, but before you do that, you have to first buy the hose, which means you have to get earn money to buy the hose or whatever. So this is great for it, being able to add these tasks, record them down, and every person who has more than like 10 or 15 tasks to do in a, in a typical day or even in a week knows that you have to get it written down. You have to get it in some sort of structure to be able to go through them all. You just can't keep all that stuff in your head. And so I've been very fascinated by task management systems for, for years, and I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, Paul and, and Federico talking to us about how this particular system differs from others and also from uh, you know, how you interface with it, how you use it, and stuff like that. So this should be a really interesting conversation, especially for this busy people that have lots and lots of tasks to do. Dan, uh, you have any thoughts on, on our show before we uh, get started? Yeah, I was just going to say that's the million dollar question, I think, for, for everyone. I know you probably know this better than me, Randall, but when, you, when you've got a lot of stuff to do and when you're busy, you really need to keep that managed. So I'm really keen to find out what, uh, what Task Warrior can do to help us with this. And, and especially things like, you know, I can't do this until I first do that. So being able to somehow capture that and represent that, I think, is essential in any task management system. Mm. So yeah, I'm definitely. Really Looking forward to this, but before we do that, we have a sponsor. I love it when we have sponsors for this show because it helps pay for all the costs that we have behind the scenes. So this episode of Floss Weekly is, in fact, brought to you by Netflix. Netflix streams thousands of TV episodes and movies directly to you instantly, which means that you save time, money, and hassle. There are several easy ways to instantly access streaming movies and TV shows with Netflix. You can watch Netflix movies and TV shows on your Mac or PC or iPad. You can watch on your iPhone. I do that myself. And some Android phones as well. And if you have a gaming console, an Xbox 360, a PS3, or a Nintendo Wii, you can watch Netflix right on your TV. I have a PS3, and it does full 1080p streaming. It looks really beautiful on my, on my big screen TV. And if you're not a gamer, you can watch Netflix on your TV with an Apple TV or a Roku box. They're inexpensive and easy to use. I personally have a Roku as well, and it also has Netflix on their really nice interface for that as well. With Netflix, you can watch movies and TV instantly uh, using any of these devices. And when you begin watching a movie or a show on one device, you can finish on 
on a different one. So occasionally I'll be watching something on my big screen at home, and then I go off to a hotel somewhere, and I pull up Netflix on my laptop, and it picks up right where I left off. Very nice that way. Whichever way you choose to use and access Netflix, you can watch as many movies and TV shows as you want, any time you want, and you can cancel any time. So try Netflix today for 30 days free. Go to netflix.com slash twit. That's netflix.com slash T-W-I-T. Be sure to use this URL when you sign up for your free trial. We thank Netflix for their support of Twit and Floss Weekly, and we hope you enjoy watching instantly with Netflix. So let's uh, go ahead and bring on our guest, uh, Paul Beckingham. You're joining us now. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning. Now, where, are we, where are we speaking to you from? Uh, my kitchen, which is in Boston. Boston, good. Uh, the rest of your house also in Boston or just the kitchen? <laughs> Mo most of it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> great, great, great. And also with us is uh, Federico Hernandez. Hope I pronounced that right. Hello, welcome to the show. Yeah, that's correct. Very good. Well, my, my little bit of Spanish training is helping me just slightly, so hopefully I can pronounce some of these Spanish names correctly. And where, where well, are you? Well, you have been in Mexico. Sorry, what? Haven't Sorry? you? Haven't you been in Mexico last weekend? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you've been following my tweets. Yes, I was in Mexico last weekend. So, yes, I've had to learn a little bit of Spanish to be able to handle that. And where are we speaking to you from? Are you also in Boston? From... Not in Boston, in Sweden, Gothenburg, on the west coast. Oh, Sweden. Well, thanks for staying up late for the show. That's, uh, that's, I know it must be getting pretty late on the day, right? No, it's just early evening, half past seven. Okay, that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Well, uh, at the beginning of the show, I sort of gave my view of what I think Task Warrior is all about. But, uh, Paul, why don't you start by sort of giving us the, the sort of the problem space that this is and how Task Warrior helps us uh, solve that. Okay, um, Task Warrior is a, a simple to-do list program. You can, uh, you can put together a very simple list and you can just store it, list it, modify the tasks, mark them as complete. And uh, if your needs go a little beyond that and you want to record things like due dates and uh, tags, annotations, it, it, will, it will scale up and let you uh, do more sophisticated things with it. So it's a to-do list and it's about as complex as you want it to be. Now, I have a high personal interest in this because ever since my life got more complex than the three or four things I was going to do today, I had to figure out some way to write this down, and I must have gone through 70 or 80 different systems of, you know, how I read it on paper, and then when I got more and more sophisticated, how I started using computer programs to do this. Uh, my current sort of exciting way of doing things is I'm using an OmniFocus, which I find really great because there's all sorts of different views that I can pull up and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. given that there's hundreds, maybe thousands of these uh, to-do managers, how would you distinguish Task Warrior from the rest? Um, it, it tries to be very lightweight. So it's not something that requires you to pull up a browser and uh, authenticate. It's just a simple command line tool. So there are a lot of people out there that spend most of the day at the command line, including me, and uh, it's right there. So it, it, tries to be, it tries to be very lightweight so you can just quickly record information. And that's one of the, one of the keys of uh, being productive is to, is to try and capture the information, get it written down into a file or something quickly and out of your head. So, so this um, is a command line tool. Is it, is it usable from Windows then, or is there a Windows version of this? Um, we have a SigWin binary, so yes, provided okay. you're running SigWin. But we don't have a, we don't have a MinGW. Or a, so if you're on a Linux system, you'd be pulling open a command terminal. If you were on uh, OS X, like, like I am, you're pulling up a terminal.app or something that's equivalent to that. And what do, right. you, what do you see when you're interacting with this thing? How, how, how do, what's, what's the interface look like? Um, it's it's going to present uh, a lot of data in sort of a rectangular grid. So okay. when you do a list, you'll get a, you'll get a, a report that has multiple columns, and various rows representing your tasks, and various uh, metadata included. So it's... Um, it's it's definitely character mode command line. It's uh, it's colorful, so it uses a lot of color. It can color your tasks according to rules, uh, according to various metadata. So what you get is sort of a more colorful version of the ls command, if you will. Very cool. Uh, so uh, a task uh, can be just like the the name of something to do. Like I must uh, I must water my garden or something. But I know that a lot of tasks have attributes, like uh, I have to. It, it's going to take at least a half hour to do, or uh, I have to have some resource that is uh, limited, or I have to do this after I do something else, like purchase the hose. A task Warrior can represent that? Yeah. Um, it'll let you assign a task to a project. It'll let you uh, tag the task with uh, various keywords. Um, 
It lets you assign a priority. It lets you add notes to the task annotations. So it captures a fair amount of metadata as well. Um, but there's a there's a constant demand actually for more metadata. And, and you just mentioned one, which is sort of an estimate. You said that if you have a task that takes like thirty minutes or so, that that's another piece of metadata we don't spoil yet, but we're going to. Ah, okay. So I couldn't quite yet say I've allocated, you know, 17 hours worth of work that they, they're all due before 5 o'clock today. There's no way to find that out from Task Order yet. Uh, no. In fact, in fact, recording time is a really difficult problem because you, mm -hmm. you really need to know how much time you have available. So and that sort of involves your, your calendar, your work week, your daily schedule, and, uh, and you've got to be faithful about starting and stopping the clock too. So that's actually a tough one. So how did TaskWarrior get started? What was the problem you were facing? I'm presuming you're the lead director for this. What, what, what was the problem you were solving at the time, and why did TaskWarrior start evolving from that? The, uh, it, it started back when I was using uh, todo.sh, uh, Gina Trapani's uh, excellent tool for, for doing just this. It's a, it's a simple tool. It's mostly shell scripts, or it was. Mm -hmm. And I was using that, and at some point I decided I, I, want, I need more formatting. I wanted the text to wrap. I wanted uh, a little more control over the visuals. And so I wrote uh, Task Warrior as sort of a demonstration of that, and it sort of took off from there. And, so and did, I, you, did you imagine that you would keep developing it, or was this just sort of a quick demo? I didn't think it would be a five-year project. No. Wow, wow. And uh, Federico, how did you get involved with Task Warrior? Well, I was also using um, Gina Trapani's tool, and uh, at that time I was managing a lot of uh, Fedora servers, and uh, it was portability issues. Task Warrior is just a, a C++ binary, so you can copy it around, and it's there. It's not depending on uh, other tools. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I saw the tool two years ago. Um, I think it was two years ago, yes. Got in contact with Paul. I started to make a Fedora package for it, uh, putting it into Fedora, writing man pages, and so on. And uh, from that on, uh, we started to work together. Very cool. Uh, so so you, you collaborate, obviously. <laughs> you're not next to each other physically, so you must collaborate through the, uh, the net. Is that, uh, is that easy or difficult? Um, it's quite easy, actually. We have mail, we have chat, we have IRC. Um, we have actually never met. It's the first time we actually uh, talk to each other. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so, so this is the first time you've ever actually spoken to each other in, um, you know, voice terms, I suppose, other than IRC and so on. Is that true? Yeah, that's true, actually. Wow. Okay, that's cool. I feel like we're bringing people together here on the show. I feel like we're doing Oprah, Oprah kind of thing or something. Um, <laughs> Another really, first really cool. last week. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I was curious about, um, I mean, being the, the kind of the Linux guy on the show, I know you say it's cross-platform. Obviously, you guys use Linux as well, and it works on OS, uh, OS X. Um, so does it work on Windows as well? And um, do many people use it on Windows? Because I'm imagining most people uh, don't spend a lot of time in a, in a terminal on Windows. Actually, we have quite a lot of uh, Windows users, and yes, there is a possibility to use it on Windows. That's uh, via a Sigwin package. So mm. I've not only packaged it for Fedora, I've also uh, done a, a Sigwin package, and you can just uh, install it from the um, uh, Sigwin installer. Mm. Excellent. And um, is it packaged for many of the major Linux distributions? So could I, you know, in Fedora, Ubuntu, whatever, just go and get it from my package manager, or do I need to, uh, to download yes. it? Yes. Actually, we have it in all major uh, Linux distributions. It was a long process, starting with Fedora, um, then getting it into Debian and Ubuntu took some more time, but uh, it arrived actually at some point, and then we have Arch Linux, uh, Yen2, then smaller Linux distributions. Uh, we provide our own uh, Mac. Uh, packages. So, uh, if you're not comfortable on the Mac platform to compile things on your own, um, you can even uh, download a Mac package. Okay. So, um, it, it's you mentioned that it's a, it's a C++ binary. So, can you tell us a little bit why you decided to choose C++ for this project and what made it right for Task Warrior? Um, that's uh, for Paul to answer. I guess he started it to write in <laughs> C++. 
Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. It's C plus is a language I know, and I like the uh, like the standard template library. And I don't really have enough Perl experience to write in Perl. Hmm. Okay. So I wondered. I just wondered if Randall would have something to say about you mentioning Perl there, but he uh, he kept very quiet. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I was muted actually. I was sort of biting oh, my tongue. right. Okay. <laughs> so you were actually screaming, but we couldn't hear you. Um, <laughs> so um, that, that's that's really cool. So how big is the the, the code base, and um, you know how many people does it take to maintain it? Has it has it grown a lot over the years? Yeah, um, the code base is currently around um, forty thousand lines, I believe. It's it's gotten to be quite large. And uh, as for the maintenance, we we have a team of about five or six people that that work on it regularly, and we have about a hundred contributors that have sent in patches and code and docs and various things. So um, it doesn't require a lot of uh, a, a big team, but uh, but there are a fair number of people involved. Hmm. Okay, so keeping on that kind of theme while we're talking about it, how many how many people would you say are involved in the development of Task Warrior? Um, the total uh, is about a hundred people, if you count um, the, the the contributors of uh, bugs and patches and issues and requests and um, documentation updates and such. So it's about a hundred. Oh, that's cool. So how many, how how do you manage your source? Do you use something like Git or one of, yeah. uh, some kind of version control system? Right, we use Git. Um, we have uh, Git actually hosted on our own service. Federico takes care of that. So uh, we uh, people send in patches. It's it's a very kind of uh, traditional model. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Um, that's something that we always try and emphasize on this show is getting people involved and submitting patches and so on. Um, so I mean, it's good to see that you're engaging a, a wide community of developers and so on. Um, so. Um, how how did the software actually kind of um, grow? Was there a key point where it became popular and, and you saw a big upsurge in users, or has it just been a slow burning process for you over the years? Um, it, there was a there was a period at the beginning where where it became functional, where I was just me using it, and I gave it to a couple of friends who, who tested it and gave me some good feedback, and then. Uh, it was really not used at all until over two or three years ago when, when suddenly, I guess, it got enough features and uh, the people started to show up, uh, Federico included. <laughs> Excellent. So um, that, sound, that sounds very cool. So if I can jump back to Federico for a minute. What, um, I know Randall's kind of asked you this a, a bit already, but what made Task Warrior really interesting to you as a project? Because as Randall said, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of task management tools out there. So what was it about this that kind of you saw and thought, I need to... Get involved with this. Well, it was uh, as I said. I was uh, working on a lot of Fedora servers during that time, and um, I was living on the command line. And uh, I wanted to have a to-do list manager for my servers so that I could uh, manage them. And uh, that uh, cuts off uh, GUI uh, to-do list managers. And there was uh, Gina Trapani's tool. But as then uh, Paul already mentioned, um, it's the formatting, the output, the functionality, and uh, then it, that it was a uh, binary, standalone binary that they can just copy around and uh, use wherever I uh, wanted to, to work with. And uh, during that time, it uh, was just a um, tarball uh, source code and uh, as I had all these Fedora servers I made the package so I can just install it everywhere I wanted and uh, then I added man pages I distributed it where I worked and uh, that's how I got involved with it and why I'm using it. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Um, so I, uh, I'm going to pick a, a question here that, that Randall was going to ask, I'm afraid I'm going to steal it from him but um, I know he was telling me that when he installed it it required uh, Lua to be installed uh, when he was inside. is that true? Because you were mentioned before that there are no dependencies for it. So is that something else that he needed to get that for? I was just a bit confused over that point. Uh, well, we had um, a dependency against uh, N curses, but then uh, Paul uh, managed to to make our own N curses uh, compatible library with all these um, escape codes. So we dropped the dependency on N curses, but. Um, we have now started with uh, 2.0, the upcoming 2.0, to uh, want to have extensions um, to the to the core, hmm. and uh, to write these extensions, we decided uh, on the language Lua. That's why now we introduce actually a dependency against Lua, but uh, that's just for um, compiling it. 
then uh, mm. once you have compiled the, the program, um, you have a standalone binary. Is that because Lua gets pulled into the binary, so you don't yes. have anything to move anything else around? Yes. And, and how is Lua used? Uh, it's, is, is it added to, is it like, can, can I program my tasks in Lua syntax or something? Paul, you can answer that. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, how is it used? It's actually not used yet. We're building out a, a hook system and an extension system so that you can you can add full blown commands using Lua or change the formatting using Lua or um, you make various changes such as and this uh, harks back to one of the one of Randall's earlier questions. If you wanted to add more metadata, we want to be able to do that using Lua. So we want to be able to have an extension system. You can add metadata, change the formatting, add commands, and uh, we don't want to have to require people to learn C++ and, and get down and dirty into the code. Yeah, I think I think the the learning curve for Lua seems to be a lot uh, shorter and shallower than uh, C++, and certainly uh, less error prone. Let's put it that way. Um, so, so so it's interesting. So my system, I, I installed an OS 10 and it pulled it in because it's in the Mac port system, which is again, thank you for making that trivial for me. Um, it, uh, but it, but it was funny because it pulled in Lua, but you're saying you're not using it at all yet, huh? Well, uh, we we did implement a system, but uh, and then we did some refactoring, and uh, it's sort of obsolete. So, we, <laughs> we have, the fact that Lua is in there right now is not of any value to the user. But with the 2.0 and later versions that we're we're going to release, it will be uh, critical. So we've talked so, a lot about the actual project itself and the things you're doing with it. I actually want to get back just sort of just the, the user interface and what, what it is I'm seeing when I'm interacting with, with uh, the task warrior. So I've got a command line and I'm saying things like task add water the plants, right? Right. You'll, you'll type in task add water the plants and it'll say something like task one added. Very okay. simple. Just sort of just sort of a task sort of goes into a black hole. When you type task list, then you'll see that list coming back at you. And list is a command, and it's one of the custom reports. So you can you can look at uh, various reports to see that that one task. So yeah, uh, it depends on what metadata you want to display. Now, and so, now how's this, how's this stored? Are you using some sort of database internally then? No, it's a flat file. It's a text file. Um, it has a format that's sort of reminiscent of JSON right now, but it's not JSON. Uh, it will be one day. Um, it doesn't use a database because I don't think that's really necessary. It's a very simple kind of uh, line-oriented uh, data file, and uh, querying that is a question of uh, reading it in and applying a filter. It's not something that I think a database would, would offer a lot for me right now. And and that's probably because somebody probably doesn't have ten thousand things that they have to do, and if they do, they probably aren't just using this. Well, actually, I I have something like four thousand tasks in mind, so because I think I'm probably the, 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 the certainly the oldest and heaviest user of it. So um, it, hope, perform, uh, it performs it performs fine with that number. Sorry, I was just saying I hope it doesn't all do before Friday. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some of them do many years ago, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you have historical information in there then? Right. It keeps it keeps the uh, completed and deleted tasks in a separate file, so that it's never really accessing the full set when you just generate a simple list. It only generates only accesses the uh, the current or pending tasks. But there are some reports that, that do require it scans back in history. Um, it can I generate a few charts that, that do that. I understand some one of the aspects of reports is things like actual spent time on things that I can say start a clock and stop a clock when I'm working on a particular task, and so that's the kind of things you'd have in the, in the historical information? Uh, right, the, um, the start and stop time, and also a sort of a change log of everything that, that happened to a task, like every, every annotation you made and uh, changes of priority and such, so you can look at the history of it if you wish. Have you, uh, have you seen people that uh, are using this, say, like, like consultants like me to be able to track uh, time logs, to be able to do billing and stuff from there? Um, Billing is actually a complicated problem. Um, that's that's that problem that requires that we know something about your calendar and your work week and your daily schedule. So, uh, I think there are a lot of people who who use it for sort of a very lightweight time tracking, but it, it's it's probably not ideal for tracking hours spent if you're if you're if you need some kind of granularity to it. Okay. The other thing I fascinated me was this idea of a dependency system where you, you don't see task two if, if uh, task one needs to be done first, at least in some of the views. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Uh, dependency was a, was a feature that was requested for a long time before we finally relented and put it in. Um, it's complicated. 
because uh, you, you need to be able to specify a dependency. And then there are issues about um, breaking a dependency chain. So if you have three tasks where the first depends on the second, which depends on the third, you have a chain. And if you, if you manage to complete the second task out of sequence, then do you, do you uh, connect up the chain or do you leave it broken? And, and so there, there are a lot of uh, sort of thorny issues. And people have expectations of how they think it should work. And so it took a while to resolve that to the point where we were happy with it. But um, we, we have dependencies, and uh, and you know, it does what you said. You can you can hide the tasks that are blocked. And, and one of the things I do frequently with uh, with uh, OmniFocus is I have a task that's mostly sequential, but might for step two might be actually three parallel tasks that can be done in any order. But all three of those need to happen before I can start on the third task. Is that something that, that could be modeled with this dependency system? Uh, yeah, you can have a task depending on multiple other tasks, right? Ah, okay. So I just model all those intermediate tasks as being dependencies before the, the, the next task in the, in the sequential list then. Right, right. And, and what are some of the other metadata? You mentioned tags. We, we have tags. Uh, people like to uh, add various tags to the tasks. I use a, a tag bug, for example, to, to identify the bugs from the other tasks. Uh, you can use a project. You can assign a project to a task. Uh, I use that for handling the different versions of, of Task Warrior, actually. Actually, I use Task to develop Task, so it's sort of circular. Um, wow. So <laughs> we, have, uh, we have priorities. You can assign a priority. You can add annotations. It records the, the start time, the stop time, the time the task was created, due dates. Um, you can hide a task until a certain date. For example, if you put in a birthday reminder task, you might not want to see that every day for the year. And you might want to hide it until two weeks before the birthday. So that's, that's another feature. Um, and uh, recurrence is a big one, recurring tasks. What, what would that be like, like, the first Thursday of every month or something? Yeah, pretty much. Um, we don't actually support that explicit construct, and although we're going to add that shortly. Um, but uh, it, it'll do, you know, recurrence periods of like, you know, week, day, month, year, quarter, uh, twelve days, whatever. Yeah, and, I recall. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm done. Yeah, I say, <laughs> I recall. Uh, I used to sit across in my cubicle from uh, Mike Zool, who was a very fantastic programmer, and he wrote a tool like this back in. Oh my God, it must have been 1980 or something like that. And I remember one of the things that he was very proud of having completed was being able to do the first Tuesday after the second Monday of the month, which is slightly tricky because it's not the second Tuesday necessarily. It could be the third Tuesday. Right. That's, that's some complicated math there. Uh, we don't support <laughs> that yet, but we're, we're, we're working on that. We're working on supporting expressions in the command line. So you can say things like, this task is due uh, three days before the end of the month, things like that. And, and I was also hoping that maybe someday, it doesn't sound like you've got this kind of logic in there, but maybe someday you can do things like, you know, 40 days before Easter or something, because, you know, that might be useful for some people. Well, we will be able to do that. And uh, we ha we're working actually on a uh, data library that can do these natural expressions and uh, do math with data on all kinds of terms. Um, Easter particular is quite a... Uh, requested thing here in Europe because a lot of uh, public holidays are based on, on the Easter date. And not just Europe, I'm sure everywhere people have some sort of concern about that. Uh, that's, a, that's an area though that's been explored a lot. Are you able to leverage any other libraries to be able to do that sort of stuff? Well, we were looking into um, other things, but then we decided that we want to do things on our own because uh, we can uh, then uh, manage and uh, particular uh, to task related things that we uh, want to model and express. And how do you decide then from the list of possible features looking forward in the future? I know you've got a really interesting roadmap already laid out. How do you decide amongst all the possible features then what resources you have and how quickly you can get, you know, how do you prioritize the, the potential changes to Task Warrior? Yeah, that's an uh, interesting question on uh, how to prioritize these things. Um, we have our own personal itches, and uh, then we have the, the user input, and, and, and we see uh, it, uh, what will be able to be done uh, within two or three months, because we want to release actually every two or three months. We normally fail, and we release every four months. Mm. So... Um, 
now has been almost yeah four months now from uh, 194 yeah. to um, the beta we are going to release soon with 2.0 and uh, actually if it doesn't fit into the uh, release we just postpone it and then uh, it will be considered during the next release and that's, that sounds very cool so can you tell us a little bit about what's new in in uh, version 2 what's coming up I yeah, can do that. we have. Oh, you can do that, Paul. Excellent. I got a list right in front of me just for this. Oh wow! Okay. Um, uh, we, we're adding we're adding uh, custom formatting for various fields, so you can you can render the data, the metadata, in various ways. Uh, one example is a date. If you have a date, such as a due date, then uh, you can just render it as a as a date according to the the user's uh, preference, or you can render uh, a due date as a sort of a countdown as to how many days are left. So it's just two different views of the same data. So we. We've added about 30 or 40 formats for the various fields, so you can see things mm. differently, um, and that's that's sort of new. Um, we've uh, we've rewritten the rendering code so that it, it can generate a the uh, the rectangular grid of output in a in a more efficient way and therefore faster, which is nice. We've uh, we've added a new filtering system so we can actually. Uh, when it's complete, it's not yet. When it's complete, we'll be able to provide a, a full algebraic expression, like a SQL where clause almost, to specify which task you want to see, because people have been asking for logical constructs. Um, and then uh, another one is that we're we're building, or rather we're not building, we're working with, a, with someone who's building an Android client for this. So we have a task server coming up. We, we have a server, another product, and the server will be able to provide data to task warrior and to the android client and any other client really it's going to be an open protocol and so that's that's something that's that's uh, that's underway right now oh, okay that that's fascinating because that is something that i actually wanted to get into and, and ask you about is syncing across different devices or uh, networks and so on because some some people in the irc channel are asking at the moment uh, is there a way that they can have you know multiple machines and sync their task list between them with task warrior Yes, there's actually one way, sorry. Um, people started to use uh, Dropbox quite a lot. And uh, mm. then a while ago, I think during last year, we got a contribution that um, can sync and merge data just with the um, task binary using uh, SSH, for example, or FTP. Okay. And um, so, the next step actually was uh, also one of our own personal itches is um, if you have a task, for example, on one server and that server is um, needing some attention, um, the idea was actually that uh, that server should talk to a task server um, and add automatically a task, uh, look after me. And uh, mm. from that, uh, we thought it could be used even to distribute the uh, usage of tasks with different clients, different machines, uh, mobile phones, for, for example. Mm. And uh, that was the start for the task server. Right. Because that, that sounds like a really useful feature because I know um, one of the big things for me about any kind of task management um, solution is that I need to be able to look up my phone and my computer and all these things and see the same tasks, uh, you know, and what I've done and what I haven't needs to be updated on all of them. So it sounds like task server could be the perfect thing for that. Um, have you thought about linking into any of the other, um, albeit proprietary services like um, the Gmail tasks and things like Remember the Milk and stuff? A lot of clients seem to do that. Are you, are you at all interested in that or are you focusing on your own protocol? Well, we have our own task server and then um, that's uh, also the reason why um, uh, we're using or want to use Lua for the extension because um, uh, if you want to hook up this, the system to uh, or task to other systems, you can write an extension that uh, translates task to um, that particular system without having to uh, work on the core or change the core. Mm. Ah, okay, that 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 sounds really uh, really useful. I mean, you mentioned a uh, an Android app which you're hoping to um, come out with in future. Is there any plans for maybe uh, an iPhone app or any of the other platforms out there? Well, that's um, the natural thing that uh, should follow up after the Android or together with the Android and uh, iPhone app as well. Mm. That's the two okay. major uh, mobile platforms. Mm. 
Um, now, I, I actually I wanted to reference. I use a, um, a, a tool called Astrid. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's an um, it's on Android app basically, but it's a task manager and it, li it links with um, third-party services like Remember the Milk and so on. Um, it's actually open source. I think it's under the GPL as well. So, would you be interested in kind of linking with any of those things as well, so they could maybe use a Task Warrior server as a you know as a um, a data store or whatever as well? So we haven't uh, looked into other um, services at the moment and are focusing actually on, on task itself. Mm. But uh, okay. it's no problems uh, with the extensions to hook it up to, to other services. Cool, cool, no problems. Uh, makes sense. I don't want to keep laboring that point, so I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll no, let no you problem. Off that. <laughs> um, actually, and Dan, main... um, sorry, go on. Actually, we uh, the the task server is going to have an open protocol, so we can we can essentially write any client we wish to connect to it, and Task oh. Warrior will be the first client that connects to the task server, and the Android app will be the second. Um, but there's no reason why uh, anything couldn't connect to it. We we have uh, we have demo scripts that connect to it, so it's it's not going to be a complicated thing. Oh, but um, but there but there is an important point to be made about Dropbox. Uh, a lot of people are actually using Task Warrior and Dropbox now to to propagate the files among machines, and that's that works fine. But it's important to know that Dropbox is not a syncing protocol. It doesn't it doesn't do sub file merging. Mm. It will copy the file. It will make sure the file is is up to date in multiple locations. But it will not be able to take two files that have been ed edited and interweave the 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 data correctly. So uh, it, it's, it's not quite correct to think that Dropbox is actually going to do the right thing with multiple clients in okay. this case. That, that, but yeah, that's interesting. So does that create any problems with um, you know, some of the files maybe not be, as you're saying, it doesn't do all the, the kind of merging and so on. So does that ever cause problems with people saying, I've lost a task or something like that because something that Dropbox has done in the background maybe lost a line out of a file or something that's, that's important? Yeah, I, I haven't heard anyone uh, make that claim yet, but uh, I'm sure it, it, it has happened. It, it is possible, certainly, if you were to edit from different locations, you could do that. Cool. Um, so sticking with kind of interfaces and so on, um, I, was, I was curious that um, there seems to be, one, when I did a search for Task Warrior in, in Google, one of the, 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 I think the second suggested search term was Task Warrior GUI. Uh, and I notice you, you, you have a you obviously have a, a terminal interface and so on. Um, it, it, are you interested in developing a GUI, and are there any out there at the moment that people could maybe use if they want to? Um, I would say that, that we pretty much have our hands full getting the uh, getting Task Warrior itself uh, mm. up to date and moving that forward. Um, there is there is an interface right now. Uh, a, a gentleman, Steve. Raider has written uh, an interface called VITTK, which is a, a TK interface, and it provides sort of a, it's still a character mode, but it's a full screen uh, experience, um, and that's been that's been reasonably popular. So there there is one interface in that respect, and there, with the task server, there's going to be the possibility to put pretty much any front end on it you like, including a web page. So uh -huh. uh, I think that stuff is sort of uh, in the near future, but but if we don't really have more than just the one. Uh, VITTK right now. Hmm. That's interesting because I was actually you've, you've actually answered the question I was going to ask you next, which was, are you interested in putting a web interface on it on top? But it sounds like that will actually be with the task server will it be made a lot easier for you? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Um, the the task server is, is sort of fundamental to this. It, it it will do the proper syncing, the proper merging between tasks from multiple sources. It, it will have the uh, have the history and. Uh, I think that's that's step one is to get that uh, out there and uh, robust enough to to use, and then develop the various clients. And uh, like you said, yeah, a web server would be uh, sorry, a web browser uh, front end would be ideal, and we can that'll let us also put in uh, an iPhone app or whatever. Excellent. Um, so one of the things I always like to ask people on on the show is, um, some people will know I'm a big fan of the of the the GPL and so on. So I always like to ask about licensing. So uh, what made you pick? Uh, what, like, well, firstly, what license is, is Task Warrior under? And then, secondly, a kind of a subsequent question: uh, What made you choose that license? Um, we, it's using GPL version two, and um, I think it's more of a of a decent default cho than a than a choice. So, mm -hmm. it was not chosen for any real strong reason. 
Okay, that's interesting. So what, there, there was no kind of um, philosophical reason for, for choosing it. Uh, that, that, that is interesting. So is it uh, just GPL V2 or is it V2 or later? Just that, I'm just being pernickety now. <laughs> I, just <thought> that. <laughs> I don't think I know. Oh, okay. It's um, <laughs> cool. uh, 2+. Plus. It's 2+. Plus. It is 2+. Plus. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now, it's just something I always like to ask, because the Linux kernel being V2 only has caused some uh, interesting uh, things in that community. It's 2+. Two, two um, so, so that's cool. So, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, anything else you want to say about licensing or anything to do with that before we, before we move on? Uh, Frederica, I'm, I'm a con conscious that we haven't really de uh, let you in as much as we should have done. So any anything you want to no, say about no, all no that? No problem. Um, the licensing, yeah, well, that's uh, also we default basically to get it into, uh, into all major Linux distributions. Um, yeah, if it's not open source, we cannot uh, integrate it, and uh, that helped uh, us a lot. Um, the other thing is uh, with our code and uh, the task of being open source and um, we are also actually um, having uh, major requests for features handling by some RFC system that uh, makes it possible for people to um, not just ask for a feature, that's quite easy to ask for a feature and then, uh, then just wait. Uh, uh, we want people uh, requesting features uh, to participate in developing features, in particular when they are difficult to uh, to implement. So uh, we we use some RSC uh, related uh, system where we develop uh, features and discuss them until they are ready to be implemented. So Paul, I'm curious: is this a labor of love for you, or is there some idea that you're going to do some consulting in this later, or build a company around it? What, what's the sort of strategy you have for your your exit strategy for started having started working on this? Um, I don't have an exit strategy, although that sounds like a pretty good idea at this point. Um, it, it, it's a labor of love, really. It's uh, it's an open source program. It's going to stay that way. There's no there's no plans to commercialize SaaS and uh, no, not consulting either. It's just uh, it's a hobby, but so it would be. It is true to say that if I did not have to develop Taswire, I wouldn't need Taswire, and I would have a lot more free time. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like that for the project leader, for the guy who comes up with it in the first place. Uh, but you do have enough people working on it now that if you decided, well, I don't want to use Taskbar anymore, I'm just going to use uh, Sticky Notes or something. That other people is there is there enough motivation in the community to have carried it forward, even if if that's actually sort of the hit by the bus question. But you know what I'm getting at there. Yeah, there are a lot of people sending in uh, sending in patches and contributions, and um, we've certainly got enough people using the product now that the uh, that they started to help each other on the RSC channel, which is nice. So, uh, I think I think uh, I think there are people who would take it and do stuff with it. And so, just just like that's a sense of that's not the plan. No, no, no. It's also not a plan to get you hit by a bus either. So that's that's always really relatively safe there. How how much time are you putting into this, uh, or do you not even want to think about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, 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 it consumes a fair amount of the weekend and a, a, you know, an hour or two here and there during the week in the evenings. Not really excessive, but uh, it keeps me away from the television. And, and, and in, in the process of having done this for a while, what's the biggest surprise you've gotten about creating something like this and putting it out there for the world to use? That's a good one. We we uh, the biggest surprise for me was we thought we knew who was using it. We thought it was just like a, a cross section of society that happened to enjoy the command line, which is sort of a tautology. But um, we we uh, we put out a survey. I, I have a uh, I have a mentor who who suggested putting out a survey to to mm -hmm. find out the reality of who is using it. And it turns out that it's mostly developers and sysadmins. Hmm. We had no hmm. idea. And and, that, and that's surprising how. Because I didn't think that was the case. I didn't think it was something that uh, developers would use. Oh, okay. Very just, cool. Just really just an assumption I made that was wrong. Yes. But, but it was interesting to learn that. So we and don't so have to hold back on complex, geeky features. Okay. So you have, uh, so you have, a, you have a road map of how, where you want it to go. Uh, you have a way that people can actually contribute to that and, and make some nudges and nuances into the sort of future tasks. Um, is there, if you, if you had like 50 more developers that just said, I'm going to start working on Task Warrior with you tomorrow, is there, is there, a, is there sort of a grand vision way out there that uh, you'd like to take this, or is it only going to be about incremental evolution? Um, we're only really able to do the incremental stuff right now because they're, 
there aren't 50 developers out there saying I want to do big things with this. Uh, yes. But uh, but we do have plans. Um, I would I would point them towards the task server and say make it better. I would oh. say I would say uh, look at the task server protocol docs and uh, make a client. And so is that is that a reasonable call to action then? Are you looking for people that can program that want to or they're interested by this and also can um, you know have some motivation by doing a, a, a task management system? Uh, C++ necessary, I guess so. Uh, Lua maybe no, also helps. No, uh, if if the if they're writing a client for the uh, task server, it can be really anything. It doesn't matter. It's, it's um, it communicates uh, over SSL, uses JSON, doesn't require any specific technologies other than those. Ah, so, so this opens up to anybody who's just a web whacker. Then they could probably do all sorts of great things with this. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. And does It'll does be, it, does the server have all the functionality of the command line client in that sense then? I mean, is it, is it also able to manage dependencies and, and summary reports and things like that? Or is that, or is that, or is it just a data repository and that all has to, the analysis stuff has to be done by clients? Right. It's, it's a data repository. So, okay. uh, so it allows you to write a much simpler client. I mean, I, I think it would be hard to write a, a client that's more complex than TaskWire, actually. So uh, the server would let you write pretty much any client from from uh, from the very simple up to as complex as TaskWare and maybe even beyond. And uh, you must have some server costs. How how does the server cost and stuff get paid for? I'm guessing your wallet, right? Right. And are you looking for yeah. looking for any kind of contributions? There are a couple of wallets involved in this, yeah. And uh, <laughs> but we've had some uh, we've had some donations of server time, which has been really nice. Mm -hmm. We've, we've had. Uh, We've been lucky, and you're probably able to leverage off of uh, public services. Is this hosted on some something public like SourceForge or or Google Code or something? Well, actually, uh, uh, we started with uh, GitHub, but okay. um, at the end um, we switched to our own uh, Git server because um, we just not only wanted to have a Git server, we wanted to have a Tinder box where we can run uh, continuous Unix tests during mm -hmm. development. So um, the server itself also uh, hosts the website, runs our unit test uh, suite each day once, and uh, prior to a release, we run the unit tests like uh, every uh, four to six hours. So if uh, someone wants to sling a couple bucks your direction for running that server that uh, is no longer free, you're not going to you're not going to complain about that. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, great. Well, I think I've gotten through a lot of the, the questions that we had in mind. Is there anything, uh, Paul, going first, is there anything else you want to say to our audience before we uh, let you go? Um, I, I just want to uh, say thank you. There's a lot of people who have contributed to this, and in particular, um, we've been working closely with uh, uh, Dirk Dimeke recently. Uh, we've had other contributions from uh, David, Patrick, John Florian, Corey, Don, Johan, Schlatter, all, uh, all big contributions and very very much appreciated. Cool, cool. And Federico, any last words from you? No, I just uh, can uh, say the same as Paul said right now. We had uh, a lot of nice guys uh, contributing to the project, and uh, it's uh, really great to be working with them. Very good, very good. Well, thank you guys both for being on the show, and uh, I'm sure a lot more people will be hearing about Task Warrior now. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Very good. That was uh, Paul Beckingham and Federico Hernandez, who are working on the Task Warrior project. Uh, Dan, what do you think? Yeah, really interesting. I think the, the server element of it is the, the most in, in interesting bit for me, particularly because I was just chatting to the people in the IRC there as we were doing the show, and, and the big thing that people kept saying is, I need to have a server for this, or I need to be able to sync it across all my devices and so on um, in an easy way. And um, I think as the guys kind of highlighted there, I'm not sure Dropbox is really designed for that. Um, or really the best solution. So I think this could be really interesting to see what can be built as kind of extensions using their um, their Lua extensions and so on on top of the server that they're going to build as a platform. And I also like the idea that they've carried this for quite a while in terms of recognizing that there's complex issues involved in having just, just I mean, you think tasks are simple, but there's a complex relationships, there's allocation of time, there's allocation of resources, there's views. I only want to look at the work tasks while I'm at work. How do I make sure that I'm only seeing that or so I'm not distracted by, by that? And I have something like 700 tasks in my, uh, my forward-looking uh, 
uh, I'm probably more like 600 now, but in my forward-looking thing, but a lot of those are like, someday it would be great to do this. And, and then I also have about 6,000 pieces of email that I have in a folder called To Do that people over the years have sent me these great suggestions. I am overwhelmed by all the possible things I could do today, always. And to have a good task manager that can sort out Really, the only thing you need to get done today are these seven things, and those are uh, approachable and attackable and completable by the end of the day. That's the real uh, need for a task warrior or task uh, manager for me. And so I'm glad they're sort of looking at some of those issues, like only showing the things that are available to you or only showing the things that don't have a delay time and stuff. Uh, Dan, is your, is your day like that at all? Kind of, yeah. Although when Paul said he has 4,000 tasks open in his task manager, I felt like a bit of a... A lazy kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of lazy, lazy article, as we would say over here. Um, yeah, but uh, I don't have quite that many. But uh, I, as I was saying, I use a thing called Astrid, and um, that is, a, it's a GPL licensed client for um, for things like uh, you know, remember the milk and Gmail tasks and so on. So I was curious about the way they were talking about that because with these, obviously, with these smartphones that we all carry around now, you have GPS in there, you have. You know, you can locate yourself by Wi-Fi and so on. So there are things that you can connect to things like Astrid, where you, when you go to a certain location, it will say, oh, don't forget, while you're here, do this as well. And that is really, really useful. And, and it sounds as though, to me, that's something I was trying to get at with them there. It sounds as though Astrid could very easily be plugged into a Task Warrior server as the back end because, this, you know, they're kind of quite distinct and separate. So um, I think that could be really, really interesting. And it was also interesting that that, that was the first time they've actually spoken in yeah. person. Yeah, that, that was great. That's a that's a first for Floss. That's really kind of handy. I thought that Floss Weekly. I mean, that's it's a not Floss yeah. in general, but Floss Weekly was a, we actually brought two people together who had never spoken to each other before. I thought that's, that was sort of cool. Um, also, one other thing I want to say about having a repository for my tasks. I mean, it is essential to me that when I pull up my iPhone and I put a task in there on OmniFocus, that it syncs almost instantly with the cloud, so I can come back to my laptop and go, well, there's the there's the actual date and information for that. Uh, and it's having something that's an open format standard for that, because I know that the, the format that OmniFocus is using is some magical, you know, megabit. So I'm not, I don't have no, any idea. I, w I wouldn't be able to attack that with a, with a third-party client because it's just not going to be there. So having an open format and an open repository for something that is as fundamental as handling a task list, uh, I think is going to be an interesting game changer for these sorts of applications. Because I could actually see it come back the other way, where the OmniFocus people now have to say, "Oh my God, we've got a sync with Task Warrior," because there's no, we're, we're going to get left behind otherwise. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Some other things I'm looking forward to <laughs> are the upcoming guests. <laughs> There's my awkward transition for the week. I always try to make it just as crazy as I can go to. We have a lot of great people on the uh, coming up in Q3. Still, uh, next week, next week, uh, Simon Phipps and I are going to be live at OSCON. Well, I hope we're going to be more than live at OSCON, but <laughs> we are going to be live and live at OSCON. We have the uh, the slot open for the Wednesday show, just like we always tape it, and, but we're hopefully going to grab a guest sometime between uh, Monday and Tuesday or Tuesday evening. Uh, hopefully somebody will want to announce something. Like last year we had uh, OpenStack being announced by Rackspace guys uh, that were really, really cool to be able to get that and get kind of a scoop on that. Um, you can't count on a scoop every year, but we're going to try. We'll see who we can get. If nothing else, Simon and I will chat about what we see uh, happening at OSCON this year. So we're going to live show for next week. Uh, coming up after that, Colin Percival is going to talk to us about the FreeBSD on EC2. So being able to run a FreeBSD instance on Amazon EC2, he did some work there to make sure that, that happened. So it wasn't just Linux and EC2 or just, uh, sure, let's say Linux or Windows, which are the only two options before he came along. Also, his uh, application TarSnap, which is about making backups using tar files and stuff. Uh, right after that, Perry McDowell is going to describe Delta 3D, which is a uh, big uh, 3D modeling imaging package that has a basically real-world simulation stuff, uh, built originally for military simulations, but uh, usable by the rest of us now for things that aren't involving weapons, probably. Uh, Chris Shoneman is going to talk to us about Synergy, which is uh, a great way of taking uh, one set of mouse and one set of mouse, that doesn't make any sense, one set of mouse and keyboard. I guess that would be a set, right? A mouse and a keyboard, and being able to use them across multiple screens, which is really handy if you have, say, you know, you got a win Windows machine sitting next to a Linux machine, maybe sitting next to an OS X machine. You can use any one of those keyboards and mice and just drag it across to all your screens. Pretty, uh, pretty amazing stuff. Um, Brian Call, Leif Hedstrom after that on the Apache Traffic Server, which is a high-performance uh, proxy, reverse proxy server for... Uh, 
uh, that uh, allows you to handle a huge amount of traffic, uh, similar to, uh, I think, Nginx, if you're familiar with that. A uh, bunch of more people on the list. I won't bother you with all your video on the list here this time. Uh, but if you go to twit.tv slash floss, you'll see from there is a link to the page that I'm actually staring at right now in order to forget who's coming up next. If you have a project that's not on that list, please uh, have the project leader email me, and I will add them to the list. As when I start my Q4 scheduling, probably in a couple weeks, uh, we'll be able to put them in on Q4 or beyond, as it might work out. Uh, if you're following our Floss Weekly, our new Floss Weekly uh, Identica handles, and uh, what's the other one? Twitter, yes. What is Twitter? Right. <laughs> what is Twitter? Uh, so on Twitter and Identica, we now have a Floss Weekly uh, uh, announcement um, uh, handle. So if you follow those, you'll be able to tell when we add new people to the schedule. And I also try to announce the upcoming this week's guest as a reminder so you can tell who we're going to have this week. And also I try to get an announcement out about an hour before the show to say, yes, we're, we're going to go live so you can uh, watch us as we do live. We go live at uh, 9.30 a.m. on Wednesday mornings uh, Pacific time. We call it Leo time because it's wherever Leo Laporte lives. Um, and uh, various times around the world, after uh, whatever time it is now, I guess, basically, that's the right time for coming in on that. Um, you can also see me at OSCON. I will, in fact, be there, like I said, with Simon Phipps, but I'll also be wandering around all week. So come up and say hi if you see me there. Uh, I'd be love to talk, chat with people who uh, find out about me through Floss Weekly as opposed to maybe finding out about me through my Pearl books and other ways, too, and that's always been kind of handy. Also, a few weeks after that, I'm going to be at Dragon Con, the giant uh, 30,000 attendee conference um, of, uh, of uh, boy, it's just it, you know, 45 tracks wide. We take over all of downtown Atlanta. So if you happen to be going to that, I'm speaking again there this year. Uh, I'm actually doing a live repeat of the lessons learned from Flossing Weekly that you might have heard a couple weeks ago in the show. Uh, but I'm going to do a sort of interactive one there and chat about that again. Uh, I'm all over the place. Otherwise, follow me at Merlin, M-E-R-L-Y-N, to find out uh, what I'm having for lunch today. Yeah, no, actually, it's usually good announcements, like where I'm going to be and where I'm actually at at the moment, that kind of thing, like my four square chickens and things like that. Uh, that's a lot of things for me to promote. So, Dan, is there anything we want to say about you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've mentioned this before on the show, actually, but um, one of the big things coming up for me uh, in the next uh, three weeks is uh, Org Camp, which is our own uh, our own event that we run with Linux Outlaws and the Ubuntu UK podcast here in the mm -hmm. UK as well. And uh, funny you should mention Simon Phipps, actually. He, uh, he gets around a lot because I was talking to him last night about coming along and uh, doing a talk for us at Og Camp, and he's agreed to come along. So if you want to if you live in the UK, you're a Floss fan, you want to meet me and Simon and, and some of the other uh, great people who will be at Og Camp, uh, have a look at ogcamp.org, which is O-G-G-C-A-M-P.org. It's on the 13th and 14th of August, so it's only ooh, almost three weeks away, but I'm not panicking uh, with the big list <laughs> of things that I'll... I, I could probably use Task Warrior for this, but the, the big list of things I've got to get sorted. Um, yep. Not quite on the scale of Dragon Con, unfortunately. Only 500 people there, but it's enough for me to try and keep happy. Um, so if you uh, want to know anything about all the other stuff I'm doing, like uh, the, ra the radio show that I do, the music show, uh, Rat Hole Radio, all the other things, if you go to danlynch.org, then you'll find everything there, my Twitter, Identica, uh, Facebook, everything else. Now Google Plus as well, um, mm -hmm. now that I'm getting into that. So, yeah, go and have a look at danlynch.org, and you'll find all the information there. Yeah, I have to say that you and I are both uh, sort of jumping into the Google Plus bandwagon, so it's one more place you can follow us and things that we're actually chatting about. And uh, uh, it's, I'm still sort of, you know, coming into when would I go to Google Plus, and when am I just going to put it on a tweet, and when am I going to... There's just so many ways to be social. I'm kind of over-socialized at this point, so I have to figure out where this is going. I, I actually really look forward to uh, Google Plus becoming more integrated, uh, especially with uh, maybe some federation of services so that I can automatically import or export things either into or out of Google Plus. And at that point, it'll probably be my primary, um, you know, if I can take stuff and write it, author it originally in Google Plus and then export it into, say, Facebook or Twitter or something, uh, I think that's going to be probably my primary interface for a while. What do you think, Dan, about that? Is that something that you might consider too? Yeah, possibly. I mean, I think like you, as as you say, um, the, the problem with, for me at the moment is for a long time I've been using Twitter and Identica and all of my clients are set up for that. So mm -hmm. when I want to post to, to everything at once, uh, none of them are actually set up for Google Plus because it's so new. So uh, I'm finding it difficult to kind of have to go to different apps to add different things. And I think it would be quite cool uh, for that kind of stuff. Great if you want a discussion as well. Uh, if you've got time for a, an actual two-way discussion, it works a lot better than the 140-character limited uh, messaging system, I would say. And not only that, it's rich media, so I can drop in maybe a, a picture or a, a video uh, even in response to somebody else's query, which is sort of nice. Mm. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's all good. So go and check out uh, Google Plus if you can get an invite. That's another thing I've had at the moment. <laughs> a lot of people emailing me asking for invites to Google Plus. Uh, so um, yeah, if you want to, uh, if you want to find out more about it, then I, I don't mind. Go and find my website and, and let me know. I'll, I can't uh, promise I'll let everybody on the Twit Live channel on, but I'll certainly have a go. So there you there go. You go. I've there set you myself go. up for a lot of extra work. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Well, Dan, uh, thanks again for co-hosting the show. It's always appreciated when you were able to come on and take time out of your busy day to help out uh, while we chat with our, our guests. No problem. Always a pleasure. Thanks very much. Very good. And of course, I'm hearing the music there. So I guess it must be about time for me to say goodbye. So uh, thank you again for uh, listening or watching the Floss Weekly, however you're getting it each week. And uh, we'll see you all again next time. <laughs>